Hello everyone, Imtiaz here from JobReadyProgrammer.com where we teach thousands of students how to code and get jobs in software development. I often talk about the technique of, of getting your foot in the door in tech. What's the fastest way? And we've talked about it in many other videos and a lot of students have tried this and have found success is to learn SQL first because it has the lowest barrier of entry. You only need to learn a couple of things and get a lot of practice in SQL and you're, you'll be able to get your foot in the door and get a job as a developer, as a database developer. And then you can learn other things like web technologies and full stack development and so on. But at least get your foot in the door uh, in a fastest, most efficient way possible. I haven't talked about what's the fastest way to get a salary boost. Let's say you're making $100,000 a year as a software developer or as anyone really in, in tech and you want to boost to 200000 or two fifty. It's possible to do that too. Uh, how do you do that? I have a technique that I've coined and it's called the newbie noob technique. It doesn't exist out there so if you google it it's not, you're not going to find it something that I've termed. But basically it uh, means that if you go into an industry that is new and even though you're a noob in that industry, it's okay. The industry is new. So you just quickly learn uh, as much as you can in that industry and start applying for jobs. And chances are there's going to be a lot of demand uh, in this new uh, popular uh, industry and not enough supply yet. A lot of people are still learning. So you could be, you could do the first mover advantage and get a pretty good salary. I remember when I used to work in FinTech as in an investment bank, I won't say the name, but uh, we had to hire a consultant to build a search engine for one of our uh, client apps. And he uh, didn't have much of a background in, in fancy technologies. He had been developing uh, in C++ for over 30 years. He was pretty late in his career. But he knew this very, very popular search engine technology at the time known as Elasticsearch. There weren't as many developers that knew Elasticsearch. So we hired this guy as a consultant and he worked with us for over a year and a half to implement this project. And he was making $400 an hour, rightfully so, because he was really talented in this particular subject matter. And he, even though he only had one and a half or two years of experience in this, we had to, ch he was charging us a ridiculous amount of money. Uh, and he was really very flexible with his schedule and um, really calling the shots because guess what? He deserved to, he knew his stuff and he was able to implement and help us build this uh, thing out. Uh, eventually later I learned that and the rest of the team learned it. But that's the advantage that he had as a first mover advantage and that's something you can do. I'll give you an example of back in the 1990s, um, anyone that knew how to spell HTML and just knew the basics of brackets and like how the internet works overall was able to get a job, a six figure job, no problem. Six figure back then in the 90s was a big deal and it was you know, you, you could see kids coming in right out of college learning this and getting jobs. Later, they became the pioneers of this industry and started developing frameworks, the, 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 the really uh, effective developers. But a lot of people just uh, basically knew how to, you know, put together a web page and they were getting hired, uh, getting paid really good money. Uh, so th these types of major transitions when they take place are opportunities. Uh, we saw this happen in AI about 10, 12 years ago. AI was the new thing. Now, AI, artificial intelligence, has existed for a long time, as long as stats, statistics has existed, really. But this uh, popularity of AI, because of the computational power and cloud computing, uh, it became very popular. So people that had stats backgrounds that weren't developers learned the basics of Python or maybe R and were getting very, very good salaries. Um, even though they weren't coders. They just learned the basics of coding, learned the specifics of AI packages within Python or R, and then they were able to get jobs. Uh, so that was an opportunity for people that were, if you were, for example, an, already a developer at that time, that was an opportunity for you to get a huge leap in your in your career to get a boost in your salary. Like, you know, if you already know C++ or Python or Java, whatever language you know, you just pick up on these, these different packages of AI and then you can really quickly uh, you can apply to a new company and get a, a, a nice raise, uh, sometimes a 100% increase in salary, which is awesome. We saw this happen in cloud computing. When cloud computing first came out, uh, people that had understood the internet, understood basics of you know uh, tech and maybe knew a programming language were able to quickly land jobs in this field and they were charging a boatload of money uh, for those services. Uh, Right now, we're in a, in, a, in, a, in a time of huge transition. Fintech, the financial industry is changing very rapidly. 
and this new industry has come about within tech known as blockchain. Learn it, learn it, learn it. I'm learning it. I've been developing some uh, code, pro I've been coding on the side for about a year with this language known as Solidity. Uh, which is a uh, Ethereum. Uh, it's a Ethereum is a is a is a is a uh, coin. It's basically a cryptocurrency. For those of you that don't know what Bitcoin is, make sure to look into that because this is huge. This is really important. Maybe even practice investing in it. Learn what that is. But Ethereum is a cryptocurrency. It's a decentralized um, uh, contract ledger-based system, and you can create contracts using this Solidity programming language. So for those of you that are in finance that don't have a programming background, it's okay. Learn the basics of programming. Take some of my courses if you'd like. Um, once you get that minimum viable knowledge required to be in tech, uh, learn Solidity because there's huge demand. If you type in Solidity developers or blockchain developers, there are so many jobs coming out in this industry. So you can make a lot of money in the, in the coming years, uh, even if you're new to this space. Uh, so look up blockchain, look up cryptocurrencies, look up Bitcoin, Ethereum. There's a lot of other coins out there, uh, but this is definitely an industry that's here to stay and it has great potential in the going, coming in the next 10 years. And you could be somewhere really, uh, uh, really up there in your career if you enter it at the right time. And I think right now is a good time to really start learning this stuff. I, I will hopefully in the future create courses on this as well on my website. But if you want to learn how to become a software developer, um, learn different programming languages, uh, and then get hired as a software developer. My website, jobreadyprogrammer.com, helps you do so. Check it out. I've put a discount in the uh, description below. And if you liked what I had to say in this video, make sure to like this video, subscribe to the channel to stay up to date, click the bell icon, and I'm going to wrap it up. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in another video.